Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and just worship Jesus. Worship and just thank Him for His presence. Father, we just pray that this, this auditorium will be full and thick. Thick with your glory. Thick with your presence. Right now, just minister your, continue to minister your presence over your children. To those of you joining us by Facebook. Yes. If you're experiencing the fire of God, just take out your phone and put that emoji, fire, fire, fire. Amen. And I know many of you right now joining us by Facebook are experiencing the fire of God like we are experiencing in this place. You can put an emoji of fire for us to know that you are experiencing the fire. Amen. Just thank the Lord for His presence, for His grace. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let this atmosphere be thick with your presence, be full of your presence, be full of your power. Hallelujah. We thank you for this resurrection power that is present here with us. The power that is able to change. The power that is able to bring a shift. The power that is able to change and bring things to come to life. We know, Lord, that this resurrection power is here present with us. I pray today, Lord, that marriages will shift. I pray today that finances will shift. I pray today that health will shift. I pray today that minds will shift. In the name of Jesus, on the whole, I pray, Lord, that lives, O oh God, will shift. Those that have turned their backs on you, those that have turned their lives away from you today, I pray that by this resurrection power, Lord, things will shift. People will come back to you. People will come back home and they will experience this power and this glory in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for your presence. We bless you, we honor you, we give you all praise and all glory and all God's children shout amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may take your seats. Amen. Turn with me to John chapter 5. I'm going to read from verse 1 down to verse 17. John chapter 5 verse 1 to verse 17. How many of you are excited? Hallelujah. You're looking glorious looking all white amen hallelujah i can see the glory and the power of god all over you amen john chapter 5 you know i titled my sermon god is always working amen it's one thing for us to stand here and to say to you that god jesus has risen and jesus is alive amen but i i want you to know not only is jesus alive but he's working amen Am I the only one who just felt the anointing? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> when I just said that Jesus is working, I just felt the power and the fire of God all over my head. Amen. Is my, head, is my hair growing? <laughs> Amen. Because it felt like my hair was, was just germinating something. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think if I had some hair, it would all be standing by now. But praise God. But the anointing is strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Where was I? I said, yes, Jesus is working. And I believe in this season, many of you need to know this word. You need to understand. Those of you joining us also by Facebook, by YouTube, you need to know that Jesus is working. Amen. He's not sleeping in the tomb. Amen. Awaiting the Spirit of the Lord to raise him from the dead. Amen. He's not still hanging on the cross. Amen. He died, but on the third day, he rose from the dead amen and the fact that he rose from the dead it means that he's working amen he's alive the bible says he sits at the right hand of the father interceding for you and for me amen so today he's working on your behalf amen so john chapter 5 verse 1 to 17 i'm gonna read it quick it says sometime Later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda. Let's go. And which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One was there had been invalid for 38 years. Say 38 years. I believe no one here has been invalid for 38 years. If this man who was invalid for 38 years was able to receive hope, amen, from the Lord, God was able to heal him 
and restore him. No one here is beyond the restoration. If a man sat for 38 years in one position, amen, awaiting and waiting and waiting. I don't think anyone here has waited for something for more than 20, for, for, for 38 years. But if, 38, if after 38 years, this man was able to encounter the Lord, amen, you can encounter this risen Lord today, amen. Come on, is somebody here with me? Because you'll be shouting a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. It says, one who was there had been invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him, amen, lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Amen. Anybody here wants to get well today? Anybody here wants to be delivered? Anybody here wants to be set free today? Anybody here wants to encounter this resurrection power of the Lord Jesus? If this is you, just shout, Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. It says, do you want to get well? Come on, Jesus. After sitting there for 38 years, Amen. What a question to ask someone. Do you want to get well? Of course. Of course, look at me. I'm crippled. I'm this, I'm that. For 38 years, I've been sitting in one place. Of course, I want to get well. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I, while I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Amen. May no one steal your miracle in this season. Amen. Oh, you did not hear me. May no one steal your miracle. May every destiny killer that has been assigned to steal your miracle, may God by His power today take him out in the name of the Lord Jesus. May that resurrection power take out every destiny killer in your path in the name of Jesus. If God's children are here, say amen. amen. It says at once the man was cured he picked up his mat say I'm picking up my mat and he walked and I'm walking say I'm walking hallelujah say I'm picking up my mat and I'm walking say I'm walking out of this place or with the glory of God say I'm walking out of this place with the resurrection power say I may have walked in here with no power but I'm leaving with resurrection power. It says at once. Say with me at once. Heesh, at once. Amen. There was no more delay. After 38 years, this man, it was an at once. It was a sudden encounter. It says at once. Amen. Jesus said to him, do you want to get well? He said, yes. The Bible says at once. Amen. At once, the man was cured immediately, amen. Immediately, he, was, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which he took, this, this took place was a Sabbath, amen. It was a Saturday, a day that they were not supposed to work, amen. But Jesus heals, heals him on the Sabbath. Je Jesus was literally saying to them, I am the what? the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus was literally saying to those religious leaders around that you can only find this rest and you can only find this healing only in me. It's not in the rest of a particular day, amen, or a particular time. Are you with me? Yes, Jesus was saying it's no more in a day or a particular time. This rest you can find only in who? in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just remembered something. The Lord just reminded me of it, of, 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 of an encounter that I had, I would say about 18 years ago, when I was driving to Tema. Amen. And I was, I was in this place where, you know, I, just, I, had, I got saved maybe about a year, a year before that that encounter. I was driving to Tema to work and I was, as I was driving and I pray that the Spirit of the Lord would re really remind me and help me put the story together. Yes. Amen. So I was driving to, to Tema crying out to the Lord and I, I was sick to the bone, to, to my bones. But yet as I was driving, crying and saying, Lord, I want to encounter your presence. I want to encounter your glory. It was the first 
time, amen, I was just saved for like a year, but it was the first time that I heard the audible voice of God. And I believe as the Lord is reminding me of this story, I believe someone has walked in here seeking for rest and the story is going or this testimony will encourage you, amen hallelujah so I was as I was crying and, and 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 shouting out to God amen in despair I just saw this vision God showed me this vision of me standing and preaching to many people amen imagine driving and just you know it's like what Paul experienced what is how the Bible says like an out of body experience amen so I really don't know how I made it to work, but I know I, I made it to work. But for like 10 seconds, amen, for like 10 seconds, I saw myself and then I was in the Catholic church, amen. So I saw myself just like boom, amen. And I saw myself preaching to many people. And at that instant, at that moment, I heard the audible voice of God, a loud voice in my ear saying to me, you will find peace only in my word oh rabba shandai rabba koko rabba sanda he said to me you will find peace only in my word and there's someone here who has walked in here today and i believe when i said the word sabbath i said the word rest the lord reminded me of that vision when he said to me you will find peace only in my word someone has walked in here today seeking for peace seeking for joy and that peace and that joy can only be found in where in the word of god can you shout amen Amen. I heard God say to me, you will find peace in my word. Amen. But I also saw myself preaching just to make you, to make you laugh. Amen. And then I, because I was then in the, in the Catholic church, amen, we were newly engaged. Newly, like a year of, of being engaged. Amen. So I thought to myself, I was going to become a priest. Are you with me? You know a priest, a Catholic priest, you, you can't get married. Amen. So I was excited about this vision. I was crying. Amen. I was going to be preaching to thousands of people. I don't believe I have reached there yet. Amen. This auditorium is only like 400 people. So I think there is still more room for expansion. Amen. That dream, that vision has not yet been fulfilled. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe there is more room for expansion and for increase. Amen hallelujah amen so i called my beautiful wife and i said to her listen this is just the, this is the vision that the lord just showed me i saw myself preaching to so many people amen and i heard the audible voice of god god saying to me that you would find peace in my word amen as i was crying she also started crying amen so she said to me because like i said all we knew was the catholic church so you can know what was going through her mind. Amen. So she said, to, she said to me, what are you saying to me? Amen. Now it was no more about the fishing. Amen. It was no more about the thousand people that I was going to preach to. She was like, so does that mean I cannot marry you? Does that mean I have to become a nun? Amen. Hallelujah. Little did we know that after some few years, God had different plans for us. God had greater greater plans for she started crying amen my wife loves me a lot amen so she said to me so does that mean I, I have to become a nun amen does that mean if you become a priest I can't I can't marry you amen I said I don't know if God wants me to become a priest of course I can't marry you amen but little did we know just few months down the, the road God took us out amen and, and put us somewhere different and today we are married amen and the vision is being fulfilled can God's children say amen with their pastor? So this is just to encourage someone because this, I know the Lord just said this into my spirit, amen, that you can only find peace, amen. The Sabbath, amen, the day of rest is no more, is no more about a particular day where you can sleep all day. No, it's no more. Rest is only in Christ. Peace is only where? It's in Christ and in His Word, amen. We always say that, 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 that peace is not the absence of trouble. 
Are you with me? Peace is not the absence of trouble. The Bible calls Jesus what? The Prince of Peace. Amen. So peace is not the absence of trouble, but peace is what? Is the presence of Jesus. And today, you can have peace today because you have Jesus in your life. Amen. You can have, oh, I thought you'd be shouting a louder amen. You can have joy in your heart because you have Jesus living in you. Amen. You can have rest in your life because you have Jesus living on the inside of you. Put your hand on your belly and say, Father, let this peace right now begin to overflow in me. Someone is seeking after peace. Someone is seeking after peace. Someone who has been addicted right now, as you are saying this, God is breaking this addiction in the name of the Lord Jesus. The blood of Jesus, as you are declaring, Lord, let your peace flow out of my heart. That addiction in the name of the Lord Jesus is being broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. May you experience the abundance and the overflow of that grace and that peace over your life in Jesus' mighty name. So Jesus was literally, can I have the scripture up again, please? So Jesus was literally saying to them, amen, whether it's the Sabbath or it's not the Sabbath, I've healed this man because I, literally, I am the Lord of the Sabbath, amen. But verse 11, it says, but uh, verse 10, it says, and so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, amen. He replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and do what? And walk, amen. And this is also a word for somebody. Many of you are in places in your life where God is asking you to do something, amen. Maybe it's not to pick up your mat and walk, but God is asking you, God is challenging you to pick up your mat and walk. But I have a word for you. I want you in this season to pick it up and obey what God is asking you to do amen it may be contrary to your mind it may be contrary to your thinking it may be contrary to what people are saying to you I mean I see the Lord speaking to many of you it may be con contrary to what what people think or what people uh, want for your life but if God is saying to you do it just do what just do it amen just do it. Look to someone and say to them, if God is saying it, just do it. Do it. Stop delaying. The man picked up the, the mud, amen. Then afterwards when they came, he said, Chale, now I'm walking. It's too late. I have picked up the mud. It may have been on the Sabbath. But the man who, who said to me, be well, he asked me to pick up that mud and walk, amen. Oh, I've seen God do these things in ministry, in work, where times where people will come against you, where times where you would say, this is what the Lord is saying that we should do. Or this is what the Lord is saying that I should do. Amen. Not everyone that, would, that you would say to them that this is what God is saying will say hallelujah and praise the Lord to you. Amen. Hallelujah. I've received more opposition in my life, in ministry, when I have said these words. That this is what God is saying to me. Amen. I don't know what God is saying to you today. In the workplace, maybe God is saying, take a risk. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe in ministry, God is saying to you, do this. It may be contrary even to what your wife or your children, your family members. But I have a word from the Spirit of the Lord. I want to encourage you to just do it. Amen. Is anybody here with me? Can you say amen? amen. Can you shout a louder amen? amen? Yes. Just do it. If this is, if that is the voice of God, let me tell you, you will not experience fruitfulness if you don't do it. Amen. It may be painful. It may be difficult. I remember times in business where God would ask me to do things. I have countless testimonies. Amen. Times where I would, God would say, do this. I tell you, business wise, it doesn't make sense at all. Amen. It doesn't make sense at all business wise, but I've learned to learn to discern and to obey the voice of God. But it's only when I, I choose 
to obey that voice that I see God bring fruitfulness and life in in my path or in my life and it's the same for you today amen I don't know maybe you're struggling to obey amen maybe you are struggling to obey maybe you find yourself on the crossroad not knowing where to take maybe you really want to take the left turn but God is saying to do to you today take the right turn I want to encourage you today take the right turn maybe today you're here you're debating should I go to this school should I marry this person should I take on this job I don't know what God is putting on your heart but I have a word for you obey the voice of God and you would see life in your situation can you say amen so the man got healed Amen. He got her restored. After 38 years, he picks up that mat. Amen. The, 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 the religious leaders begin to, to, to uh, persecute him. Why did you pick up that mat on the Sabbath? And he said, the man who healed me asked me to pick it up. Let's go down. Verse 14. It says, later Jesus found him at the temple amen first he was where he was crippled amen at the sheep gate but now after he had encountered Jesus where did we find him in the temple hallelujah it says and said to him see you are well again stop sinning or something worse may happen to you verse 15 the man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well so because so because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. Amen. In his defense, Jesus said to them, come on, let's read this out together. At the count of three, one, two, go. Hallelujah. Can we shout amen? It says, my father is what? Can we shout always? Can we shout always again? Jesus is always what? He's always working, amen? He's always working. Not sometimes He's working, amen? You may wake, work eight hours a day and need some rest. The Bible tells us that our God, He never sleeps, neither what? Does He slumber, amen? He's working. God said, even on the Sabbath, amen? Jesus said, even on the Sabbath, my Father is always at His work. Amen. Hallelujah. It excites me in my heart. It excites me in my spirit. Amen. That Jesus is alive. Amen. He has risen from the dead. But above all, Jesus is what? He's working. Amen. He's working. Someone needs to hear this today. Someone who is in the fire and thinks that Jesus has stopped working. I have news for you, amen, from the word of the Lord that God is what? He's still working. Hallelujah. Say he's still working. Say he's still working. Oh, what is that song? Even when you don't see that he's working. Even when I don't see working. I'm only here in this side. Come on, man. Amen. Amen. He's always working no matter where you are in your walk with God. Maybe you've walked in here today, you find yourself up on the mountain or maybe you find yourself down in the valley, in the deepest of valleys. I have a word for you from the Spirit of the Lord that God is working. Amen. Maybe you've walked in here, you find yourself in a waiting season. Amen. God is working. He's still working. Maybe you're praying for a loved one who is not saved. I have a word for you. God is still working. Maybe you are praying for a marriage that is not yet restored. I have a word for you. God is what? He's still working. Amen. He's always working. Amen. Maybe you've walked in here. You've been waiting for something, for a breakthrough. Maybe 10 years, 15 years. I have a word for you. 
God is what? He's still working. He never stops. Amen. He has not forgotten you. Even now. Amen. Many of you think that God has forgotten you. We can easily look at the story of the man who sat for 38 years. Amen. And look at his situation and begin to say that Jesus forgot that man. Am I right? 38 years. But Jesus, God was always working. Amen. The Bible tells us that it, the waters were always being stirred. Amen. And it's the same for us here today. The waters are always being stirred. Amen. God is always what? He's always working. Hallelujah. Can we shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. He's always working. We can easily look at this story and begin to say, God, you left this man for 38 years on that mat for that reason you were not working and we can easily look at our situation are you with me we can look at our pain we can look at our circumstances we can look at the wind and the and the storms around us and begin to make this conclusion that Lord you have stopped working Amen. Maybe you've been sick for many years and you have made this assumption today that God has stopped working. Amen. But this is a word for someone here today. Someone who needs to hear this deep down in your heart. Amen. I don't know, maybe you've not heard it, but today your pastor is here to say this to you. God is working. Amen. You need to hear this. Don't look at me like you're afraid. Amen. God is working. God is working. Put some smiles on your face for God's sake. Shout hallelujah for God's sake. Amen. I will be praising God and shouting amen. Because God is working. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't know anything about this man. Amen. The Bible tells us that he sat for 38 years. Amen. For 38 years, he stood and he watched others being healed. I don't know about you, but if I'm that man, I don't know what I will do. Amen. Just sit in one place and see others receive their miracle. See others receive their blessing. See others receive their healing. While I just sit and receive absolutely nothing. Amen. And this is really what the, the Lord showed me. The Lord said to me, this is a picture of many in the body of Christ today. Many who have allowed their problems to affect their position. Can you say amen? amen. Did you hear me? Amen. How many of you know that, yes, this man had a problem. His problem is genuine. There are two kinds of problem in this world. One is the problem that you bring onto yourself is manufactured by yourself. Amen. And that kind of problem can come as a result of, of sin. It can come as a result of disobedience. Amen. That's the first kind of problem that we have in this world. But the second kind of problem is the one that you had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with it. Some of you were born with certain problems. Problems that were passed on to you. Amen. Some of you are fighting spirits, curses, generational things that you had absolutely nothing to do with. They were just passed on to you. Amen. And it's the same for the, the man at the, at the sheep gate. Amen. The Bible tells us that he was what? He was crippled. Amen. Obviously, it was not because of a sin that he had in his life. He was born crippled and sat there for 38 years. Amen. So his problem, we cannot say it was as a result of, of sin or, or, or disobedience. Amen. He was born that way. Amen. But he sat at the, at the sheep gate for what? For 38 years and watched others receive their healing and their miracles. Amen. And we may, we may look at this story and say that his worst problem was the problem with his, with his legs. Right? We can easily look at this story. Are you with me? And say to ourselves, Pastor, don't judge this man. Because his worst problem was, was the problem with his legs. The legs are like the, the foundation of our lives. So his very, the very foundation of his life was what? 
was weak right from birth this man could not walk but he sat down in one place for 38 years but one thing I know that though this man had a problem he had allowed that problem to affect his position are you with me I've said this this I've said this before in church and many of you have walked in here today I'm not judging you for the problem that you have but why I'm preaching this sermon today is that I want you to step out of that problem and stop allowing these problems in your life to affect your position amen because the longer you allow this problem to affect your position your position is what your position is abundant life your position is to experience miracle today is to experience healing is to experience favor today but the choice is yours either to sit amen and that's why i'm here to say to you that god is working amen so that by some way you can change gears from park to what to drive so that you can move from that same position that you have sat in for many years amen Today I want you to shift gears. I want you to shift gears. Amen. Don't say, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I'm a picanto. I'm a small car. Even if I shift gears, amen, I wouldn't move fast. Let me tell you, just shift gears. Put your gear to drive and let God do the rest. Let God... <laughs> let God put some fire. Let God put the fuel. Let God move you forward. Amen. Let God do it. You just move from the from park into drive. And that is why I'm here today to say to you that God is doing what? He's working. And for that reason, I want you to shift your gear from drive, from park into drive and begin to see what God wants to do in your life. Amen. God wants to move you into a season of fruitfulness, into a season of prosperity, into a season of favor. But if you keep that gear on, on, on park, trust me, you will experience absolutely nothing from the Spirit of the Lord. That is why the man sat there. It's not that he did not have a problem. He had a genuine problem. But look at him. He said, every time I want to go into this water, someone else always goes ahead of me. Tell me this man was not desperate enough to be healed. Amen. You remember the story of the four men that took that man into the presence of Jesus. Tell me that this man didn't even have good friends. Because if he had good friends, he would have made sure that these four friends of his would also have thrown him in, into the water. Amen. All it would take with one person. One person. Amen. If I see Pastor Isaac sick and I see there's water there. Amen. And Pastor Isaac doesn't want to jump into the water. I'll say to him, my friend, I'll part, probably put him to sleep, carry him on my shoulders, carry him, amen, and then just dump him into the water. And then before he would realize, the breath of life, amen, breath of life. That's all that man needed to do was to just find just one person. All he needed was just one person to carry him and put him into the waters. Because God, in all his 38 years, God was doing what? He was working. Is somebody hearing me today? And it's the same for you today. God is working. But are you going to choose to sit on that mat? Amen. Are you going to choose to keep looking at your problem? Are you going to keep choosing to look at your circumstances? Amen. And look at yourself and forget that there is glory right ahead of you. Hi, are you with me? What stopped him from going to the temple? Why did he have to wait to get healed? When he got healed, the next place we saw, he was in the temple. Amen. It was like the man at the beautiful gate. Amen. You remember when he got healed? The next time we see he's standing in the temple, he's rejoicing, he's celebrating and praising God. But before that, he sat at the beautiful gate begging all the time and this is where many of you are today maybe it's not a sheep gate or a beautiful gate but many of you are seated down amen 
seated down and you have refused to move forward towards the glory of God where there is healing amen where there is deliverance but I pray today that this word will charge you up if God's children are here please say amen that this word will charge you up so that you will rise up out of your chairs and move into the glory of God because even now God is working He's stirring the waters. Amen. Is it healing? He's stirring the waters. Amen. Is it deliverance? He's stirring the waters. Is it salvation? He's stirring the waters. Amen. He is. He's stirring. But if you continue to keep, to keep your gear in park, you will receive absolutely nothing from the Lord. The longer you keep looking at your problem and you allow your problem to affect your position, trust me, you will be like that man and you will sit in one place for 38 years. Amen. Say with me, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Say my God is working and I'm going to move forward into the glory and receive my miracle. Can we shout amen? Amen. It's one thing if we know he's not working, right? It's one thing if we don't know that he's working, hey, we will be, we will be nervous. We will be, we will be afraid. It's just like what the word says. If Jesus had not risen from the dead, our faith today will be useless. We will have absolutely no hope, right? And this is how it will be. If we know that God is not working, uh, we will have absolutely no faith and no hope. Amen. But today, we can have faith. We can have hope. Why? Because not only has God risen, Jesus risen from the dead, but He is working. Are you here with me? Yes. He's working. He worked 2,000 years ago. He worked among the kings. He worked among the prophets. And He's working in your life today. He is. He's working. The Bible says He has not forgotten. Many of you have walked in here today. You're thinking to yourself, God has forgotten me. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah 49 verse 15, He says, Can a mother forget the baby? the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born though she may forget I will not forget you amen God is working over your life I see your loved ones being saved I see mothers being saved amen I see parents being saved amen. I see souls coming to Christ amen because the, your prayers, God is hearing your prayers. Maybe today you are experiencing a bit like what Daniel experienced. Amen. You know, when Daniel set out to pray and to fast, the Bible tells us that he experienced some opposition. The prince of Persia began to oppose his, his prayer. Not his prayer, but the answer. Amen. The angel of the Lord, the archangel Michael was coming with an answer. But there was some opposition right many of you are encountering opposition today amen maybe from the pit of hell amen but it doesn't mean that God has stopped working it may have taken Daniel 21 days to receive his miracle to receive that prayer request amen but God still caused that prayer to be answered are you with me and it's the same for you today maybe you're experiencing opposition amen but God is still on the throne and as long as He sits on the throne interceding for me, I know He's working for me today. Can God's children say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. He's not forgotten you. Isaiah 44 verse 21. It says, remember these things, Jacob. For you, Israel, are my servant. I have made you. You are my servant, Israel. I will not forget you. Amen. Anybody here in the valley, going through the valley, Psalms 23 verse 4, it says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are what? With me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. God is with you in the valley. He's with you up on the mountaintop, but He's also with you 
in the valley. When you think about the resurrection and you think about Jesus being alive, remember that He is with you. Amen. In the valley, He's with you. He says, in the valley, you will fear no evil, for you are, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God right now in the valley is bringing some comfort. Amen. Why? It's because He's with you. It's because he's alive. Amen. Say he's alive. The Bible said, he said to them, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of what? Of Jacob. He says, I am the God of the living and not the dead. Jesus is what? He's alive. Come on. He's alive. You know how you see in the movies when the, the you know in Ghana, we say the, the blow man and the, and the killer. Amen. When the, the blow man goes into the house and the killer is standing from far, amen, he wants to finish the blow man, right? He takes the, the bazooka or whatever, boom, and he blows up the house, right? So this is what happened to Jesus, amen. Satan put him on the cross, amen. Then before he brought him down from the cross and then put him in the grave. But you see how in the movie, the house will be burning, right? It will be burning. The house will be will come down. I tell you what they can do in movies. The house will burn. It will come down. Then you see the, the blow man come out with his clothes burnt. And he's just coming out like this. Amen. And this is what Jesus did to Satan on the third day. He said to him, you thought you put me naked on that cross. You thought that the nails could hold me down. You thought that that grave and that stone you had put could hold me down. But wait for the third day. Wait for the third day when I will rise up from the dead and I will defeat you and your demons. Wait for the third day when I will take the keys of, 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 of death from you. Wait on the third day when you see my tomb open and the light of my glory. Wait for the third day. Hallelujah. He has risen. Amen. He has risen. Amen. God said to Joshua, be strong and what? And courageous. He says, I will never leave you, neither would I forsake you. Someone needs to hear this today. God is saying to you, I'm with you. Amen. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Right now, I'm working for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm working. He says, be strong and be courageous. Can we be strong today? Can we be courageous today? Amen. Can we, can we declare and say we are more than conquerors knowing that Jesus is alive and that Jesus is working for us today? Can we, can we say we are more than conquerors? No. Believers can't say this anymore because we have, we have portrayed this image that our Jesus is still in the grave. He's not in the grave. Maybe Muslims may have said to you that they stole him from the cross. Amen. And they hid his disciples, hid him. No, Jesus is alive and he lives in you. He's alive in this church. His spirit is here today. And today you can experience this Jesus. You can experience this Jesus like you have never experienced him before amen he says i will never leave you amen and i will never forsake you amen be strong and courageous no matter what you're going through no matter what you're facing let me tell you this week my wife preached a sermon don't what don't fight the fire amen right after the service right after the service we went to have lunch little did we know that we had a fire that was waiting for us we were sick for four days if i say sick we were really sick for four days you know i ministered on good friday those of you who know me very well if you know pastor gabby very very well you know that on friday i was sick amen I was sick when I was walking around and laying my hands and saying, fire, be healed, be restored, receive your healing. I was sick myself. Amen. But you know that the grace over your life is not for you. Amen. That grace, that healing grace is not for me. It was for, for others. Amen. We were sick. Little did we know that we were going to fight our own fight. I said to my wife, in the 19 years we've been married, we've never been sick together. 
at the same time I remember when the kids were young she will fall sick then after one recovers the other will fall sick amen but this time both of us but we kept saying to ourselves don't fight you know it's one thing to preach a sermon but when you now have to go through it hey amen I said to her don't fight your fire this is your sermon you need to stand up and fight uh, stop fighting the fire amen hallelujah well, where was I hallelujah amen hallelujah that's what the anointing does amen praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord yes yes thank you Jesus amen so he said he will never leave you and it's the same amen it takes the grace of God it takes the power of the Holy I stood there on Friday I ministered amen I stood on on Thursday night Thursday night in my whole life amen in ministry I've never sat in one hour to prepare two sermons this sermon I'm preaching today I prepared it on Thursday night and I prepared Friday's own in one hour I went in with a fever on Thursday night into my prayer room and when I, when I was in that prayer room with my fever 39 I said to the Lord, Lord I need your anointing and the anointing and the power of God came all over me in that room I could barely open my eyes I just took the pen and the paper I started writing 45 minutes I finished one sermon second sermon 45 minutes and I was done amen hallelujah but it was the power of God because even in the weakest places in our lives the times where we are tired and weary amen God is still working let's be up on our feet hallelujah God is still working God is still working just in your own words just for the sake of time today we have few things to do for the sake of time in your own words just thank the Lord that he's working thank him that he's working thank him that he has opened your eyes to see that he's working just thank him thank him father thank you that I may not necessarily see you in the little things the little things but today I pray that you open my eyes so that I can begin to see you in the little things Lord the little blessings the here and there father let me see you so that we can begin to be thankful and grateful for what God is doing today amen and my encouragement to you as I pray over you that father that you release grace over your children to step out of that pain to step out of that sorrow to step out of that place of comfort and step into the place of glory release over them a grace today oh God to to move into a new season that you have in store for them I pray that they will no more sit sit in their problems and sit in their circumstances or situations I pray father that you would lift them up out of every dark pit and push them Lord push them into your glory push them into your glory push them into that river that is being stirred today I thank you for that grace that is over each and every one of us I pray and I thank you that our eyes have been open today to know and to understand that you are working for us today and that you have not forgotten us no matter how deep in the pit we are in you are always always working you are a father who loves us and a father who cares for us and all God's children say amen and amen